for us it was much much more successful for our kids who had sensory issues to start them at a younger age with a much more structured program of feeding than it was for us to wait and sort of let them do their own thing and let them figure it out themselves because that is the thing a lot of the times with developmental delays is that it's just not gonna work as well figuring it out for themselves. They need that extra help. <laughs> that is just where baby led weaning doesn't quite work. The other day I was talking about our experience with gluten-free and casein-free diets and while I was talking about those the other thing that I found myself thinking about a lot was our experience with baby led weaning. Baby led weaning is not quite what the name sounds like. When I first heard the term baby led weaning, my first thought was that it would be about how the baby stopped nursing, which isn't what it's about. Basically with baby led weaning you start offering them little pieces of food that is cut up and age appropriate. Starting around six months when baby starts to show interest in food, it really depends on the baby. The way it's supposed to go is your baby will start showing interest in the food, playing with the food, putting it in its mouth and eventually will progress to self-feeding. <sighs> now, I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with baby led weaning. However, if you have a child with a developmental delay, I will say that baby led weaning may not be for you. Based on my experience, that is what I want to talk about today. Baby led weaning is very, very popular in parenting circles. If a mom asks how to feed her baby, when do you start solids in a mom's group? Baby led weaning is bound to come up and a lot of people will talk about how well it worked for them. And that is probably why I decided with Patrick to give it a try. I had already done the introducing solids starting with rice cereal with Sadie and Maggie and then gradually introducing a new food a week with baby food and then progressing through the, you know, from baby food one to baby food two to baby food three, doing the traditional baby food method of feeding with Sadie and Maggie. When I was pregnant with Patrick, I heard everyone talking about baby led weaning and how great it was and I thought I would give it a try with him. Now, Patrick was our allergy baby. He was, his allergies started showing up when he was about a month old. He was just always covered in a rash pretty much from the day he was born. But they really, really started to show up between one and two months. And he was finally, we finally got him in, in April, so he was about five months old when we finally officially knew what he was allergic to. We knew he wouldn't be having any dairy. I started introducing Patrick to foods trying to see if he was interested. And he just didn't want to have anything to do with food. At six months, at seven months, at eight months, at nine months, at 10 months, at 11 months, at 12 months, no interest. He did not want food near his mouth. He didn't want to pick up food. He didn't want to play with food. He didn't want to eat food at all. And everyone in the groups that I was in said before 12 months, Food is just for fun, so it's not a big deal. He's just not ready yet. This is what baby led weaning is for, so that he can let you know that he's not ready yet. And so I just thought, this is perfect. Otherwise, he would be being forced to eat before he was ready to eat. So I really, really felt like we were doing the right thing. When he was 13 months and he still wasn't eating, I was kind of starting to worry a little bit, but he finally got there. He finally started eating and it was, sort of difficult. He did start eating some solids, but I will admit that he is now my six-year-old who has a referral to a pediatric rehabilitation center for feeding therapy. But I didn't know that we were quite going to go down that road yet. And so when 23 months later James was born, I still thought it had worked out. I was still sort of just thinking that, you know, he had started solids when he was ready. I didn't quite have the span of experience that I have now of how developmental delays might affect using baby led weaning. And so when James was born, I did the same thing. With 2020 hindsight, I definitely have some regrets and I'm kind of shaking my head at myself. But at that point in time, I really thought it was the right thing to do. And it was what everyone else seemed to be doing, at least what everyone was talking about again in all the groups. James definitely had some delays. 
he had huge gross motor and fine motor delays. He was in physical therapy from the time that he was very very small. He couldn't sit up when he was 10 months old, 11 months old. He was finally sitting up and so that definitely presented some challenges for feeding him. Because James didn't have the neck control to sit up in a high chair when he was really old enough to eat, there was really no way he was going to be eating on time. So ultimately, when he was about 10 months old, I did get him eating and the only way I could really get him eating was when he was strapped into his car seat. I would give him the only thing that he could eat was out of a packet of, out of like the applesauce packets. So I would get the baby food packets and he learned how to self-feed with those. And for a very, very long time, that was all he could eat. And that was the only way that he could feed himself or that he could take in food at all. And so finally he got good enough head and neck and upper body trunk control that he could sit up in a high chair, that he could actually sit there and then he started eating. And actually I'm not really sure if I could have done very much differently with James from the pouches because James's situation was a little bit different because James's situation was so different than either Patrick's or Tessie's. So maybe I would have figured out a little bit earlier that we should have done something different if he hadn't had such a different situation. But when Tessie came along, I definitely hadn't figured it out. And James, once he could sit up, he did start eating. So I guess I'm gonna cut myself a little bit of a break here and say that that's why I still didn't figure out because then once James started eating, he, and was able to sit up, he was eating anything and everything that he could get his hands on because he wanted to eat. He didn't have that sensory piece as much, at least with food. He did, definitely did with other things like socks, but not with food. And so I thought we were still doing okay. And then Tessie came along. And Tessie had sensory everything problems times a thousand. And we had so much going on, especially when it came time to introduce food, because at six months was when she was diagnosed with central apnea. She had so many different doctors and they were saying so many different things. At six months she was going through a barium swallow test and she was having her heart ultrasound, she was having MRIs, she was having EEGs, she was having so many tests that it was just a lot. And so I did start trying to introduce foods, put foods in front of her to see if she was interested and she just wasn't. She didn't want anything near her mouth. At one point I actually did get baby food and I tried to spoon baby food into our mouth because I guess at that point I thought maybe we should try something different with this kid and she completely flipped out about the spoon going near her mouth. She didn't like me touching her mouth, she didn't want the spoon near her mouth. I tried giving her spoons to hold so I could get the other spoon near her mouth. No. I tried putting spoon on food on her spoon, she didn't want it near her mouth then. We tried all sorts of little foods in front of her, she wouldn't put anything in her mouth. And she wasn't experimenting with putting toys up to her mouth either, which according to her therapists was not developmentally normal. They kept telling me she will eventually go through that stage, no kid actually misses that stage, but she just wasn't there yet. Her therapist had a lot of different ideas. We were just trying to get her to start experimenting with foods, so they said put pureed food on her hands, and so I tried that, and she just she sat there with her hands out and waited for me to wipe them off and would not put them near her mouth and was just completely freaked out by the fact that there was stuff on her hands. They said, try putting some toys in front of her, her favorite toys, and put a little bit of food on those, the pureed food on those. We tried that and she just, hands off, would not touch the to toys if they were messy. We knew we were up against some challenges. Finally, eventually, as she was a little bit older, and I believe at this point she was closing in on a year, she was close to a year, we were out at pizza and I had her on my lap, and she grabbed a piece of barbecue spicy bacon pizza and shoved it in her mouth and started eating it. And that was when we discovered that she would actually eat spicy foods. For a while, basically everything had to be spicy, and she would eat it. If it was super garlic or super spicy, Tessie was there for it and she would try it. She was 15 months old before we could get her to drink out of a bottle or a sippy cup and she was almost hospitalized at that point for dehydration because she still wasn't taking enough liquid in through her food or through cups and she wasn't getting enough from me at that point at her size. Her heart rate, resting heart rate at that point, we knew from her apnea monitor, monitor was 150 and so she basically learned how to drink out of a cup. We had bought every single cup in every store we could go to just in time to avoid being hospitalized 
and as in I was talking to the doc her doctors, her pediatrician, the PQ doctor that day talking about her being admitted again when she finally took the cup from my mom when I was out of the house, which I think was the key to it. I believe she drank five cups of water that day finally and finally figured out how to use a cup. Telling the story is helpful for me because it becomes clear even to me that I became less invested in ba baby fed weaning as we went along, which makes me feel a little bit better. I did try different things. I do feel slightly better about that. However, I think that baby fed weaning can be really good for a baby without developmental delays. But I think that if you have a child who has sensory issues and has developmental delays, it can actually make it harder to introduce food. I think that with Sadie and Maggie, they both had a lot of sensory issues. However, we were feeding them, we were doing the spoon feeding at six months when they were really, really little, and that really helped them get past it and get used to those textures really early. I mean, it's totally possible that they still could have had sensory issues with food. Maggie does have a lot of foods that she doesn't avoid now, but those avoidance issues came on a lot later and she basically ate everything for the first three years of her life and with Patch he started avoiding foods from the beginning and I think that had to do with the fact that we didn't do that with him we didn't he didn't have the purees really really early and get used to the foods that I think would have I think that spoon feeding process would have been really really helpful for him in getting him used to foods at a younger age when I just think it would have been easier for him the way that it was easier for Sadie and Maggie who actually had more sensory issues than he did. And so, I mean, I know you can't compare from kid to kid. For us it was much, much more successful for our kids who had sensory issues to start them at a younger age with a much more structured program of feeding than it was for us to wait and sort of let them do their own thing and let them figure it out themselves because that is the thing a lot of the times with developmental delays is that it's just not gonna work as well figuring it out for themselves. They need that extra help. <laughs> that is just where baby led weaning doesn't quite work. I know it's super popular. I know it probably works for most kids because most kids don't have developmental delays but when you do, it can make things a lot more stressful for baby, for mom and dad, for whoever is doing the feeding. And so even though I know it's very popular, I would try not to be too married to the idea that there is only one way to introduce solids, even if it's a very popular idea and you really, really love it. Because not all ideas work for all kids and you got to do what's best for your kid. Anyways. That is it for today. If you like this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in all things autism, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.